It is indeed funny how time flies. I was just listening to Tears for Fears and walking along thinking, time is flying. I better elaborate a little more on uh, my philosophy for the sake of my daughter. So this, em this video, Emily, is for you. I want to explain a little bit more about the quest or the dream of original thought. Either title works. Um, I outlined the, uh, the uh, description of, of my philosophy yesterday, and, and, and I wanted to share more about it. Like my dad's journal, he left a little bit of tidbits here and there that give Lyle and I a lot of reason to think, but never really explained a lot of the details. So I'm going to try to explain a little bit more. Maybe more, more videos will come in the future as well. So basically, my philosophy, the dream, the quest for original thought has four pieces and a banana. No, no banana. Let me put the banana in my pocket. Banana in my pocket. <laughs> Anyway, part, part one is basically the history of, of life and, uh, the, and, and what we are. You know, any, a, a philosophy should explain what we are, the, 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 the nature of, of, of what constitutes this life that we live. And so that's what I've tried to do in part one. Part two and three are basically the human condition. Where I try to, uh, and they work together to basically describe what we are stuck with here in terms of our of our brain and how it uh, how it apprehends the world and what we can do with it. Part four is a kind of a mm, a consolation prize, so to speak, <laughs> because if you buy the first three things that I say, you're not going to be necessarily very happy. I'm not giving you a uh, I'm not giving you a happy story. I'm giving you one that is rather bleak. And uh, so I, I try to remedy that at the end, and that's the whole premise. I try to lead with the positive, you know, the dream of the, uh, uh, of, of the original thought, the goal of the original thought. So let's get into it. Part one, I only have a short amount of time. Part one, um, we are, as Carl Sagan was wont to say, star stuff. You know, the uh, universe, if you follow, and this is based, part one is probably the only part of the, of the four that is really based in science. If you uh, look at the, uh, the current uh, theory about how things came about and how things are, it looks like uh, there was a big explosion a long time ago that created the universe all around us, and all the stuff, which is basically a simple elements, that uh, became more complex elements in the fusion, in the inferno, in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the heart of, of giant stars, which then exploded and spewed those pieces out, those those heavier elements out, which recombined into molecules, eventually becoming organic compounds. Your outer space is full of organic compounds, the building blocks of life, which uh, coalesce into planets like here in our solar system, and have a star in the right atmosphere around the around the, around the range of the sun that basically led to the the cauldron of uh, life here on Earth. And after uh, billions of years, life indeed did form spontaneously, seemingly, um, out of out of random random uh, chance interactions of chemical compounds over time. And this led eventually uh, for greater and greater complexity, self-replication. Um, uh, the, 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 the more successful versions of these replicating compounds uh, becoming more successful and proliferating, competing with other compounds, and became, well, well us, you know, you and me, uh, uh, human beings and dolphins and whales and jellyfish and the whole like. That is basically where life comes from. That's the whole thing outlined in step one. And you can see that if you, if you look at the scientific record of how things work. And in there, there is no evidence in there of, of any soul or, or, any, or any inherent purpose other than the actual um, endeavor to survive. Uh, you can, if you want to pick that up, Emily, um, when you get into college, or if you're lucky in high school, find a teacher that, that knows about this subject, attend a basic astronomy class. Um, you're going to get the, the seeds of that in there. Um, and, and, and also, or if you don't have that, I'm not interested in that, um, get, uh, I'll buy it for you. When, you, when you're a little bit older, I'll spend the hundred bucks and get you the Carl Sagan series Cosmos. It's all laid out there in the, in the basics. And then, and then science just further, more evidence is just showing that to be true all the time. So that's part one. Basically, we are star stuff, and uh, there's nothing more to it than, than, than basically uh, uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are competing chemical, chemical, complex chemical reactions. So that's part one. See, it's starting to get bleak already. Part, part two, part two, okay. Part two it deals with how the, um, these compounds, these, these, these bags of chemicals compete with one another in the natural world. And one of the things that's really good is that if we can learn from the mistakes of our, of our forebears, there's going to be wind up there, maybe I'll go this way, if we can learn from the mistakes of, of those that went ahead of us. And that in many ways is, 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 is illustrated in, in our very bodies. Our, you know, every element of our body you know this joint, this opposable thumb, everything like that is is the is the successful um, physical element of our past ancestors, the ancestors that were best best through mutation that best suited for survival. Now that's more than just physical, though. What you don't sometimes hear about is the psychological as well. Emotions are the same thing. All of the emotions that we have are very similar to the physical elements that we have. They are they are our 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 brains 
pushing us in the direction of behavior that is best suited to survival. Everything that I've said in my videos in the past, love, hate, anger, ag aggression, frustration, despair, all of these things basically tune our behavior towards the things that will keep us alive. You know, we, we, love, we, we love and come together to form families. We are passionate to have, we passion brings us sex. So we procreate and have children. We love our children, so we raise and take care of them. We uh, do all of these things, though, for the long-term benefit of our species. It's all a big conspiracy on the part of our brains to get us to, to create more of ourselves and push on forward. So there, there we go, emotions have a goal. The other thing is that, you know, now the lower life forms don't have necessarily uh, a conscience consciousness, so to speak. At least it's hard to tell. This is something that's hard to apprehend. But we can see this thing we call consciousness, this understanding, this awareness. Wow, I'm living in a world. You know, this kind of thing in the higher, so-called higher animals. Um, um, we, consciousness, is, I believe, this is where I'm stepping off into my own little thing. This, this consciousness, I believe, is another mechanism, another tool of biology to designed to regulate the effects of emotion, you know, okay, we see, see, you know, a rival, I'm a, I'm a man, and I'm going along, and I've got my family back here, or I'm a woman, and I see another man over there, and he's a rival to her, and I want to go bonk him on the head with a club, <laughs> get him out of the way. Well, um, that's what my, that's what my emotions will, will, prom, it will tell me to do, or to, or to see this woman over here, I want to go mate with her, and I'll run over there and do them, do them my thing. Well, Consciousness allows us to gauge the larger situation around us, apprehend the bigger world, the big picture, and make a decision whether we're going to act on the emotions, emotional prompts that we have. And this gives us our current, uh, uh, well, before I say that, so consciousness basically arose in a way to, in a manner to regulate emo our, our, the response to emotions, which are, which gives us a better chance of success in, in the world as, an, as animals. And that's more beneficial for the longer lived, more complex organisms such as humans and, and I mean, basically mammals and, and the bigger, the bigger longer lived animals. You know, the short lived, you know, the, the suzume bachi, the hornets and the, and the wasps and the ants, they go bam, 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 their life like that. They snuff out one life like that. They don't need that consciousness. There's lots more to replace them. So I believe that that's the purpose of consciousness. Consciousness, consciousness regulates the, the response to emotion. So if that's the case then, this consciousness that we have, this wondering about the whole world and what our purpose is, is really just a byproduct of, of mechanisms for survival. We are nothing more than machines, you know, we are, we are basically chemi chemical solutions that are endeavoring to maintain themselves and propagate themselves into the future and who have suddenly through this through the through the through the through the, through the, in the development of emotions and consciousness have suddenly found ourselves in a strange position of periodically with our consciousness we don't have to be thinking about emotions we can stop for just a second and go wait a minute where the heck am i what is this place who am i why am i here and that is the current situation that we have as human beings that is uh, and that is our that is our that is the nature of humans that is human nature right there and the answer is there is no purpose the we are basically a big accident that that cre that, that came into existence and has we have our emotions and we have our consciousness and they b serve their purpose but the surface purpose is nothing more than mere survival to continue on and the, it, we are rife we are filled with purpose. The purpose is to survive, but there is no purpose beyond that. And that is why human beings despair and, 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 and wonder and flail about and, and come to quick solutions and design religions and, and, phil and philosophies to basically answer the whole thing when in fact there is no answer. So that's why I said when I give you the first three, you might leave you going, what the heck? You know, there's no, what's, what's the purpose of life? There is no purpose for life. And that's true. There is no purpose for life. But I haven't. I've only got a minute left to finish off. Part four, the dream, the quest of the original thought. I believe that we are incapable inherently of original thinking because we are, we are programmed by our code to have certain thoughts and behaviors that are in the best interest of survival. I propose then that we endeavor to move past that, push past that, get beyond the, the programming that we have into the sphere of the, sphere of the original thought. And I'm not talking about E equals MC squares. I'm talking about thought beyond the ability of our, the, 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 of our senses and, the, and, and, the, and, the, and the, what we can perceive. It may take uh, the next step of humanity. We may not be able to do it. We may need to augment ourselves as the uh, immortal cyborgs, or it may take the AI that will basically uh, be our, our child that will take the quest further. I don't know. There's my philosophy. Four steps there. The quest, the dream of original thought. Now it's time for me to dream to get to work. See you all later. Bye-bye.